Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'll be reviewing this Cine B 75 HD Bind and Fly Cine Whoop from iFlight. So before getting into the review, let's have a look at some flight footage from this awesome Cine Whoop. And that is super smooth footage. And that's the whole point of this Cine Whoop. It does what it says on the tin. It's the Cine B and it does just what it's supposed to do. Now, I've reviewed and flown quite a few of these Tiny Whoop Cine Whoop style quads now. And some of them have got an HD camera on like the Cadex Turtle V2 like this. And some are just straightforward Tiny Whoops with a simple FPV camera flying on maybe 2S. And they're all really good at what they do, but there's the problem. People's expectations are quite different, and you can't expect a quad like this to behave like a three, four, or five inch quad. Just bolting on more powerful motors and an HD camera doesn't suddenly give you a quad that's an all-rounder. There's less mass, and the frame will flex more, and the ducts affect the airflow and you will get strange effects like weird yawing and prop wash. That doesn't mean they aren't fun to fly. It just means you can't judge them quite the same as a full acro or full racer quad. And if I'm honest, the 2S simple FPV tiny whoops like the original Mobula 7 and Mini Hawk that are really light with less powerful motors are just nicer to fly. Adding an HD camera and more power just tips the balance on same performance. Anyway, this iFlight Cine B is totally brilliant at what it's designed for, capturing that slow, smooth HD footage in that Cine Whoop style, while noodling around and exploring bandos or just flying around soft targets. Sure, you can get some acro maneuvers out of it, but don't expect too much. Let's take a closer look. You get all the usual stuff in the box, the quad itself, some spare screws and bolts, and the Cadex OSD joystick. And it comes fitted with these Gemfan 1635 40mm three blade props, and a spare set of HQ 1.6x1.6 four blade props. The HQ props give you smoother vibration free footage, but they're not quite as punchy. Also, you get a couple of spare battery straps which are different lengths to accommodate different size batteries depending on whether you're using two or three S LiPos. That's a nice little touch. You can order this with either black or white ducts 
and there's quite a few receiver options available. You can have the FR Sky Mini XM Plus or RXSR, the FSA8S V2, the VT4X Mini Fast S Bus, the RM601X DSM2 DSMX, and there's even a TBS Crossfire Nano option. And the combination of the dual 1mm carbon frame and the plastic ducts is just perfect for this type of quad to stop the frame flex and it not being too heavy. And iFlight make a big thing about no jello on the footage and the footage I showed earlier pretty much confirms that. And the great thing is there's no props or ducts in the shot. This is mounted a long way forward. Neatly fitted between the top and the bottom frame is the awesome success F4 flight stack that I've reviewed before. It's an STM32 F411 MPU and MPU6000 gyro on the flight controller board. And there's a couple of UARTs and the Betaflight OSD. And it uses the Matek F411 target build for Betaflight. And on the bottom, just down here, all neatly soldered in, is the 12 amp ESC board that's capable of being powered by either 2, 3 or 4S. And it supports PWM, one-shot to 125, multi-shot, D-shot, 150, 300 and 600. The VTX up here is power switchable between PIT, 25, 100 and 200 milliwatts using IRC Tramp Smart Audio Protocol using the Betaflight OSD. And it's all really nicely designed and built. The receivers fitted between the frames in here and held in this 3D printed mount that also holds the VTX dipole antenna. And you've got the receiver antennas coming out here with these protectors. Very neat design. And underneath there's this injection molded plastic base that protects the CADEX board which is mounted diagonally under here. And there's a small clip just there that stops the SD card popping out on hard landing. Quite a nice feature that. And just in there is the connector for the CADEX OSD dongle. And the CADEX itself is mounted well forward and this is the V2 version that's got the glass lens. And one thing I really like is the fact that it's got a top mounted battery which is very different from all the other Cine Whoops and it just makes it handle just better, I think. And the build quality is fantastic and really best in class. It's a bit heavier than most. Let's just check that out. So that is just a tad under 69 grams, which is probably five to six grams heavier than most. But that actually helps to make this a more stable camera platform. And when you're flying any sort of quad, you will break things and the electronics may get wet and you may end up frying something. So when you're buying, it's really important that you know that you can get spares. And iFlight have been around a while. They've got a history of quads and components that you can buy off their website. And all the parts are available to fix this. They're also stocked by your local distributors and loads of online shops. So if you break something, you'll be able to fix it. As a Cinewoop quad, this is one of the best I've flown. It's a little bit heavier than most, but that's to its advantage, and it doesn't get blown around quite as much in a breeze. Also, the response is slower, which only goes to make the footage smoother. And also, and I think this is an important thing, it isn't a fragile build that will break easily. The Success Flight Stack is solid and is my choice of flight stack for this style of quad if I build my own. So, if you want a tiny whoop size mini quad that is the master of Cine Whoop style footage, this is the one to buy. It's a little bit more expensive, but you're just getting what you pay for. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please subscribe to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.